Welcome to Break Forth Fully Alive. We are Elsa and Arlen Salty, your hosts and the directors and founders of Break Forth Ministries. We can all use a little inspiration in our day, and that's why Break Forth Fully Alive is here for you. After four decades of holding events throughout the world, we're pulling together some of the best of the best messages and classes from these events. But before we get into today's show, we want to invite you to head over to our website at breakforthministries.com, where you'll learn more about our tours to the lands of the Bible, our resources, inspiring videos, workshops, our events, and more. Now, let's get started. Brian Dorkson is Canada's best-known worship leader and songwriter. As a recording artist, songwriter, and producer, Brian has always had a passion for connecting new expression, ancient church riches, and theological integrity. His Covenant and Juno award-winning songs include Come, Now is the Time to Worship, Faithful One, and Holy God. Join Brian as he shares how his marriage, family, and ministry have been protected due to a prayer shield during his highs and lows of both life and ministry. Pam Dick, who leads his prayer shield, will share on how to start your own. Uh, my, my name is Brian Robert Dirksen, and I'm the son of Agnes Lydia Dirksen, who's an intercessor. And I'm sure I'm partly still alive because of my mother. Uh, <laughs> And what's fascinating is when my mom gave me birth uh, 43 and a bit years ago, she basically almost died. She went into a toxic shock. And uh, it was back in the day where they didn't really know what was going on with some of these things. My dad told me that they were so convinced that my mom was on her way out that they moved all her clothes to the morgue in the hospital and told my dad, you know, if you believe in prayer, now's the time to pray. And, um, well, she didn't die. She's still alive and still praying. And um, she's, a, she's a very good friend with Pam, who I'm going to introduce in a moment. In fact, that's how I met Pam. My mom was part of a prayer group in the city where she would gather people with a heart to intercede for the pastors and for our city. And... Um, my mom was doing that. Pam was doing it. And um, that's how we met. It was probably 1990, way back in the 1990s. Um, I used to um, travel initially with, a, with an intercessor, often uh, a fellow that would come with me. And there came a season where I knew that that season was over and God wanted me to broaden uh, the prayer network that I worked with. You see, I'm, I believe that there's, that almost everything that God does on the earth starts in prayer, starts in the secret place when his sons and daughters agree with him, when they hear his heart, when they get his direction. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a visionary. I'm a, I've got projects on the go and all of that stuff. But I, I know that real fruitful ministry does not happen apart from prayer. And it's like one of these almost unmovable principles of the kingdom of God. And God designed it that way so that, for multiple reasons, one of the things, he designed it that way for the sake of relationship. He designed it so that we would walk with him, hear his voice, ask of him as a son or daughter asks their father, receive from him, and we would know at the end when good things happen that it's not us, that it's him flowing through us. Um, so um, I've asked Pam to sort of just, Pam, why don't you come on up here and I'm just going to pray for you and bless you and set you loose on these wonderful people, because you maybe thought you were coming to hear me um, yak about prayer shields, but you're going to get something way better than me. You're going to get Pam, and um, Pam, um, she, she loves this. This is a bit of a stretch for her. <laughs> 
because she just likes to do the hidden. She often isn't an on-site intercessor for me. She's often at home. Maybe another member of my prayer shield will be on-site. Um, but but I, I just felt like that this is a time for a multiplication of prayer and prayer shields in the body of Christ. So, Pam, let's just pray for you, and then you just share your heart with us. Lord, thank you so much for Pam. And I thank you not just even for her, but for all the people that she represents, the people that are called to the ministry of intercession, the people that are struggling because they know they're trying to do things on their own. I just pray that today you would set off a revelation in their heart that would change the course of their life and their ministry and bring fruitfulness that would make you smile. And I bless Pam now just to be herself and to share with us your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So she's going to share a bit, and then I'm going to come back up, and we're going to do a Q&A so you can think about some stuff you want to ask us. Well, good afternoon, everybody. One of my real passions is to get prayer shields set up and get more prayer going for leaders. So I'm going to give you kind of some nuts and bolts. And it's going to be talking to those of you that are intercessors and those of you that are leaders. And I want to stretch your definition of what a leader is because when I first started doing this, we just classified a leader as a pastor or worship leader, somebody that was on staff. And I think we all know that's changed a lot in the last few years. And one of the things that I've been doing in the last two years is actually setting up prayer shields for kingdom business leaders too, people who are kingdom influencers. So I want you to just kind of uh, just think in terms of don't limit it to just pastors and worship leaders, but I want you to hear the call to get covered in prayer because it's really important. So the first thing I want to tell you is I'm probably not a regular type of prayer person that you've maybe met in the past. Um, I really love war movies. My husband's a Mennonite, which means he's a pacifist, and he married this Irish, Catholic, Welsh, Scottish girl who is kind of like everything he's not, and it's been a great, great stretch for him too. But what I do is um, God has spoken to me out of movies, and often war movies, and part of that is because I believe that uh, you can get a lot of strategy when you see war movies and you study the history of war. Now, I'm not a war-minded person. I'm not an enemy-minded person, I should say. But I do believe that we are in a war. I believe that those people that are influencing for the kingdom need to, um, if I can say this nicely, wake up and realize that you have an enemy that's not going to give you a break because you've had a bad day or because your kids are sick, or you're discouraged. He doesn't go, oh gosh, I didn't realize that. Let's just pull back and give him a few days to relax. No, you know, war movies will teach you that when there's a breach in the wall, they try to come in. So I love war movies. So for those of you that that offends, I'm really sorry. Uh, just blame Brian. So best movie ever for a picture of a prayer shield I saw about five or six years after I was doing prayer shields. I had this picture in my head of what a prayer shield was supposed to look like. And I went to see a movie, and I'm not recommending it if you don't like blood and gore, but um, it is called Gladiator. And in the middle of this movie, I'm sitting in a theater with a few hundred people, and all of a sudden there's a scene where Russell Crowe comes out with all his guys, and they have been set up to lose. They're going to get wiped out. They're supposed to reenact uh, uh, some history. He calls forth the, uh, those among the men that are with him who have served in an army. And he says, if you've served, you know what to do. And they do a thing that the Romans were famous for, which is um, the Romans had a tortoise, found, uh, it's called tortoise formation for their shields. He also does a diamond formation, which also um, defeats a different kind of enemy attack. Anyways, that prayer shield came up. That prayer shield picture came up, and there's my Russell Crowe. Best picture of a prayer shield. Now, that's the, the guy that did this for me couldn't get me the prayer shield picture, but I wanted Russell Crowe anyways. <laughs> so, and then I thought, I can make this prophetic. See, there's the leader galloping through, all his prayer people, shields and swords ready. So, yay. Okay, so in that picture of a prayer shield in the arena, though, if anybody has watched that movie, you'll notice that Russell Crowe is in the center 
And he calls out a word, and all these prayer shields fall in place. Just boom, 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 boom. Well, they don't call them prayer shields. I did. All these shields fall in place. And what it did when they worked together is the men in the center and him, him as a leader was completely covered. There was no ability for anything of the enemy to get to them. No arrows, no shields that they were, or spears that they were th throwing. They were completely covered, top all around the side. That is what a prayer shield is supposed to do. There's the Roman tortoise formation. It's that you'll notice they're little plastic men, but use your imagination. So um, figure out where you are in that prayer shield or where you need to be in that prayer shield. The point is we can learn things from how they did. Now, in this, in a Roman tortoise formation, um, see how when they're coming at them, again, top all around is protected. That's what our leaders need. But more than our leaders, their families need to be covered in that. Because if the enemy can't take out a leader, you know what he'll do? He'll take out their family. And we hear of uh, children getting sick, uh, the wives are getting sick, finances. So we want to make sure our leaders are better covered. Uh, diamond formation is a really interesting formation because when the Romans did that, it was specifically used to uh, push off chariot attacks. And how they did it is you see these little guys standing there right now? Well... They would get down on their knees, tilt their shields outward like this. And so when a chariot came at them, it would actually flip the chariot. Now, prayer, when it's done the right way and we work together, has specific strategies for specific attacks. And when a prayer shield works together, that's what we do for a leader. Now, my other famous uh, movies that I like is, I'm sorry, I'm going to date myself, but there was a great Western guy called John Wayne. Okay, yeah, okay. And Gene Autry, I'm getting really old, but my mom loved him, and so she made me watch his movies. And he was an actual war hero that became a Hollywood, you know, superstar. John Wayne did also war movies. Did anybody ever notice that when these guys were running to get more ground, you know, there's an enemy up there, and, or they want to take higher ground, what did they yell to the guys behind them? Cover me. Now, if the world knows that anybody that's taking ground needs to get covered, isn't it time we did? Now, my husband's a pastor, and it took him a long time to grasp this concept because, you know, the enemy comes in and tells you if you're really humble, well, who are you to be asking people to do this for you? You know, and if we can keep believing that long enough, he'll take everybody out because false humility keeps us acting like, um, we don't need it. Not that we don't need it. We all know we need prayer, but we don't ask for it because we think, well, who am I? Well, who are you not? If you're taking ground, if you're a kingdom influencer, then we need you to do this kind of stuff. Okay, kingdom influencers are taking ground, and they need prayer coverage. If you're a kingdom influencer, you need to be getting prayer coverage. The other thing is a prayer, a prayer shield gives you consistent and intentional prayer. For too long, so many of our leaders have lived on, yeah, I'm praying for you. Okay, that's the Christian version of let's do lunch. It might happen, and it might not happen. And it might happen while they're saying it, because they really mean it while they're looking you in the eye. But when they go home and everything happens, they might forget. Prayer shields are going to be consistent and intentional. Now, the other thing is prayer shield is corporate. So sometimes I run into leaders that have, you know, a little old lady in Pasadena, you know, praying for them, and she's all by herself. The thing about a prayer shield is we network through the Internet. We send emails, and you have a coordinator, and that coordinator contacts everybody on your prayer shield, and they get whatever it is that needs prayer for that week or that month. So prayer of agreement is a powerful thing. Two or three coming together is a powerful thing on behalf of a leader, all focusing on getting that prayer shield up. Okay, Stacy Eldridge has this great quote. She says, we weren't born into Eden. We've been born into a world at war. And as much as we don't like to think about having an enemy, we do have to realize that we do have an enemy that hates what we're doing. See, he gave up worshiping God, serving God. And so every time we step into a place where we're doing something for the kingdom, we're reminding him of what he gave up. And he wants to stop it. Okay, how much intercession do I need? If you're a leader in any type of kingdom influencer, here's some indicators that you need some intercession. First one is you, you have physical or mental anguish on a regular basis. 
Now, if you're somebody that is telling me, and I run into leaders all the time that are suffering with depression or uh, feeling really inadequate, and it's an abnormal amount. I mean, everybody does, and we all struggle with it to a degree. But when it actually becomes torment or anguish, you need to get some prayer around you. Now, those that pray regularly for you, if they're constantly telling you they're sick, they're tired, their finances are getting taken out, um, their marriage is getting hit, if the people who are praying for you that you know of are telling you that they're constantly under attack, you probably need to get more people praying for you. So these are just little indicators. Another one is if the situations and circumstances are changing for you, but only after really long laborious battles, you probably don't either have enough prayer going for you. And so we need to up it. Everybody uh, sometimes thinks they can make do with their mom and dad praying for you. And yay for moms and dads. Uh, Brian's mom is amazing. But, you know, she, even she knew, I need to get more people praying for my son. So we want to look at what's happening to the ones that are praying for you. The other thing is, another indicator that you need to get more prayer is that your responsibilities have increased. A lot of people make do with the same number of people who've been praying for them for years. But you went from being maybe an associate pastor or a Sunday school teacher to now you're, you're traveling, you've got an itinerant ministry, or you're crossing international borders and you're speaking in different places. That means your responsibilities and your influence has now increased we need to get you some more prayer. Okay, as your sphere of influence increases, like I just said, regional, international speaking engagements, that's a good indication before stuff starts going sideways that maybe we should get some more prayer going for you. Different types of prayer partners. I wanted to give you this because, um, and this was a hard one for me because as a prayer person, as an intercessor, uh, there are lots of different prayer styles. And there's also different types of assignments and different types of intercessors. But I tried to pare it down for just this talk so that you'll know what you're looking for. What we're going for is, and the four types that are going to be affected or that you're looking at for praying, uh, prayer shield is priority one. Then you want outer circle or congregation, as some people might call it. Crisis intercessors and travel intercessors. And then I'm going to explain those ones a little bit more for you. Priority one. So this is the person that we want on your prayer shield. This is a core group. This is confidential. These are the people that you can give details to. See, I find what happens to a lot of pastors, I just set up a prayer shield for a ministry in Washington. And um, there was all these things going wrong. And so I said to him, how many people are praying for you? And he goes, oh, I have a large prayer shield. I have 70 people praying for me. And I said, oh, 70 people, that's awesome. So I said, um, so are these the ones you can tell about your financial problems? Oh, no, I would never send that out. Okay, do they know about your wife's health issues that you just told me about? Oh, no, I'd never send that out to them. I said, okay, so what are these people praying for? And he said, well, I send them updates on my ministry. You know, we've been asked to go into Honduras. We've been asked to go here. So what you're looking for when I say priority one, it's going to be a smaller group. It's going to be a confidential group. These are people that you feel like you can trust that aren't going to run screaming when you send an email through saying, I feel like quitting. These are people that you want praying for that. When your finances are going astray or things like that, these are people that are not going to flip out and think you've mismanaged money. So these are people that are going to, you're going to give the details to, they're confidential, they're trustworthy, and again, consistent, intentional prayer. When I set up a prayer shield, and I'm not offering to do that for everybody, but um, I hope you all get one, um, I, I want to give you my blog address so you can go in and get some information. And I, I didn't put it down here. It's www.pamdick.com. Dot blogspot dot com. And that's going to give you all this information. And if you need help, I want you to contact me. Because my passion is that we're going to get people covered in prayer. Because the more we do, the more safe ground. And we're going to hold the ground. And our families are going to be in good shape while we take this ground. So what we're looking to get people covered with is priority one. Now there's outer circle or congregation prayer. 
Now, these are the ones that are members of your church. You know them. Probably a more general type of person. Um, they're not necessarily, you don't necessarily have a close relationship with them, but you have frequent contact. You know, they see you on Sundays, they see you at work. And this is a person you could say, gee, could you pray for me this week? I have some things coming up and I, I really need the Lord to open some doors for me. They can be acquaintances. They can be the ones who contact you and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Now, these are people that can become priority one people, but aren't necessarily priority one people right now. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so these are people that you're going to develop confidentiality with, you're going to develop trust with, but right now it's on an acquaintance level. And so you want to keep building that circle. You want to be open to the Lord to hearing it might be time to move this person up. But never, ever, ever put somebody on your priority one prayer shield that you have a little concern about, saying, I'm not sure about that. I've heard more pastors and leaders tell me they got taken out because they gave people information to pray about them that somebody couldn't handle. And that's why a priority one prayer shield is somebody who is going to be able to handle what you need to be able to say. Because if we're not going to pray about what needs to be prayed about, you understand how that can be such a trap? If we keep praying about all the surface things, when you actually are struggling with depression or you're feeling inadequate or your marriage is rocky, but nobody ever really prays about that because, you know, we don't want anybody to know, then we're not really doing the service that we should be doing for you. I mean, intercessors, I'll tell you, intercessors love details. Give us the details so we can pray. We love to pray. There's list intercessors, there's crisis intercessors, but we love to pray. Let us pray for you. Now, this is also the outer circle one is going to be a larger group. Brian's got an inner core right now. I've just been increasing his, his inner core, and we've probably got about 20 on his prayer shield right now. Now, that's his inner core. Now, those are the ones he can tell anything to, and they're going to keep it confidential. Outside of that, we've probably got a huge bigger number. Um, I did a little sneaky, I need to tell you. Um, because I actually uh, oversee about eight prayer shields right now, what I did was I emailed all of them and said, okay, I'm going to ask you all to pray for me and Brian this weekend. So we have about 150 intercessors praying for this session. Now, isn't that cool? One email activated 150 people. Now, how many of you as leaders just went, oh, man, would I love that? Wouldn't it be awesome to know when you need it? Now, you might not always get 150, but Brian has 20. And he knows he can call me or email me from anywhere in the world, and we activate those intercessors. And they're not all from British Columbia, where we're both from. We've got people in Scotland. We've got people in, we've actually just added somebody from North Africa. We've got somebody from the United States. Uh, got a number from across Canada. So as his sphere of influence increased, we started adding intercessors from different countries because they have authority to pray in those countries. So his inner circle is getting a little bit bigger too. So again, this, this larger group, you're going to send the more general prayer requests to. You don't have to give them the details yet. And they will pray for you on a regular basis. You, they're probably the ones, like Brian often has people come up and say, I'm, I'm praying for you. And they are people that will pray for him regularly. And that's why you're hoping to glean those ones into a priority one type person. But you have to have relationship. You have to get to know them. There has to be some type of a, a sense of that there's, this is a trustworthy relationship. Now, having said that, I will tell you, um, I don't put people on prayer shields that always have a personal relationship with the leaders, and I'll explain that to you later. So I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, general descriptions again go to this group. Crisis intercessors. I love crisis intercessors. You know who they are? They're the ones that wake up in the middle of the night for you, you know, and sometimes they won't even know who they're praying for, but they just go, man, I was up all night praying. I love those people. I am one, but I love when somebody's one for me. So you are going to be probably looking at people who are crisis intercessors. These are people that pray until the job is done. They might not be on your prayer shield. 
They might be ones that just come in when there's a crisis. And I have people that I can contact with my husband's prayer shield and our prayer shield. I have crisis intercessors that said, I don't really want to be involved in getting emails all the time, but when there's a crisis, call me. They're also confidential people, and I know I can trust them. Okay, these are people that you can mobilize. It can be church again. It can be that bigger group. You can mobilize them through announcements, newspapers. Um, Pastor Bob is trying to get into North Africa, and he's being stopped at the border. We need everybody praying now. That's the kind of thing you can do in a general newsletter, and you'll get the crisis intercessors just rallied around you. They can be ones you know personally. They might not be ones you know personally. These are people that love a job. I was a crisis intercessor and still am for a long time. Boy, throw me a bone like that, and I'm so happy. I can just dig into that in prayer. Okay, these are often people, too, that work better on their own. They, uh, and that's the way I was for a long time. I didn't really know how to work with a team. I knew how to pray by myself and for an issue, and that's, that's fine. You have to uh, let intercessors work their style for you instead of trying to make us all kind of pray the same. Okay, travel intercessors, I love these guys. These are specific groups that pray over your itineraries. Um, I don't know how many people here have ever heard of a, a man named Jack Frost, and no, it's not the poem. Okay, his name actually was Jack Frost, and um, I learned from him, he never went anywhere or accepted any speaking invitations or teaching invitations without a team of intercessors praying over every uh, invitation that came. So when we invited him to come to Abbotsford, we were expecting, hey, Jack, we want you to come, do your little thing here, blah, 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 and he didn't get back to us. And so we phoned him back about two weeks later, and we said, hi, we still want to get this thing booked, and he said, yes, I know, my intercessors are praying about it. And we went, what? And he said, I never say yes without my intercessors getting a sense that this is a right invitation. Now, that's an amazing relationship to have with your intercessors, but... These are travel intercessors. They pray over itineraries. They can be separate from your uh, Priority One prayer shield. It can be a whole separate team. In his case, it was. In my case, it's not. We have a group that um, we originally called the 12, and that 12 prayed over my husband and I's speaking schedule and things that we were doing. And now we've just combined them in with our Priority One. And how do you get started? Isn't that what you're all here just waiting for? How many people have ever worked on a prayer shield before, been a part of one? Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so let's for fun. How many people have never been a part of a prayer shield? Okay, now look around. Now get your hands way up. Now look around and think what would happen for them, all these people, if they either became a part of a prayer shield or they got covered by a prayer shield. Wouldn't it be amazing? First thing you do is ask. Really easy. Second thing you do is you seek. Got to start asking the Lord, what do I do? Who do I ask? How do I get this done? Next thing you do is you knock. You start going and it's one thing to ask. It's one thing to seek. But knocking is actually means it's an activation. You're going to go and start doing something towards getting this set up for yourself and getting it started. Get something in motion. Next thing you do is get it started. Knock. Say, okay, Lord, here I am. What do I do? I've got to start. I've got three that said they'll pray for me. Awesome. I've gone on to Pam's amazing blog site, and I've gotten all my information. And, um, hey, she's even going to help me if I get stuck, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start with what I have. Now, you should know that when I set up a prayer shield, I send guidelines, and I think I put the guidelines on the blog site. Anybody that you're going to ask to be a priority one prayer person for you, you should download those guidelines and send it to them because it tells them we're expecting them to be confidential. It also tells them that they're not guaranteed a personal relationship with you. And by that, I mean in the old days when somebody was what we call a prayer shield, they thought they meant they could phone and talk to you any time of the day and night. And no, that's not what they're committing to. They're committing to pray for the needs that you send through. So we want to do that. Time, test, and trials. It means just get going, see how it works. You might have to tweak it a few times. I've tweaked mine a few times. I've tweaked Brian's lot since we've been doing his. He's been my guinea pig. If you can't think of anybody else, find some friends that you feel really comfortable with, and you can start off with that. How it works. 
Okay, you got to trust your group with details. If you want real prayer, please don't just keep sending general announcements. We had a pastor that was sending through general announcements to me to send out to his prayer shield. And at the end of two years, he sent me an announcement and said, I, don't, I won't need the prayer shield anymore. And I said, oh, okay, that's awesome. What's, what's happening is you got somebody there that's going to take it over. He said, no, I'm leaving the ministry. And I said, when did that happen? And he said, oh, I've been struggling with it for about 18 months. And I went back through all the email prayer requests we'd sent out to his prayer shield, and there had never once been an indication that he was struggling. So you have to tell your prayer shield the truth. Okay, the other thing is, you want to keep it simple. Don't send three, four pages. Most of these people are going to be list prayers, which is they like to get it in bullet points. If you're a storyteller, like I am, like Brian is, it's really hard to narrow it down, but try to keep it simple so that the people, I, I try to... I try to do it this way. Try to make it so that if they want to print it off, it's one page. So that they can keep it in their Bible, put it where it's easy for them to get to. And be consistent. When I set up a prayer shield, what I do is um, I've actually become quite a little taskmaster. And uh, because I realize that the hardest thing for most leaders is not only setting up a prayer shield, so I've set up a thing on the blog site about being a coordinator, getting and training and mentoring others that you like to become coordinators and to take this on. But be consistent in sending prayer requests through. So what I do is the first of every month, I email all my leaders now and say, okay, it's the first of February, where's your prayer requests? Now, some of them are great and send me stuff through every two weeks, every week, but there's a lot that just, they're not used to using a prayer shield. So... The leaders need to be consistent, too. And go wide. Don't just stick with people in your little circle. You want to make it bigger than that because there's nothing better than having those confirmational voices from outside. Okay, some cautions. I'm going to go through this real quick because Brian and I wanted to have some Q&A with you, so um, I'll try to go a little bit faster. Now, these cautions are from Peter Wagner's book on prayer shields, and I've added a little bit of my own. So if you want to read a bit more, it's an older book. I'm not even sure it's in print anymore, but you can probably get it on Amazon. It's by Peter Wagner, and it's called Prayer Shields. And there's some great information in there. Okay, one of the things you want to look at uh, is false emotional dependency. So at the same time, you want to use your intercessors, but you don't want to become dependent on them. There's lots of times Brian will say to me, uh, can you pray about this, da 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 And so I'll pray, and I'll say, oh, yeah, I'm getting this. And he'll go, okay, that's good, but that's not what I'm feeling. You know, and that's fine. He's not dependent on me lining up with everything he's getting. What he's dependent on me for is to pray. And my job is to pray for him to hear from God. He's not just trying to hear God through me. My inter as an intercessor, my job is to pray for the leaders to hear from God. And that, again, takes into don't be controlled by intercession. Don't say, I can't do anything unless everybody feels what I'm feeling. You've got to find the balance in it because you're also the leader. So you need to be looking for the witness of the Lord for what you're hearing. A lot of times when intercessors are working together, you might get five feel this way and five feel that way. Okay, now you're stuck, aren't you? You know, so what's the answer? The answer is, Lord, okay, I need you to speak to me. And the other thing is not to let intercessors control you by intercession. You are the leader. Your job is to hear from God. So ultimately, you get the last word in this. Spiritual adultery, you can't use intercessors to the point where you are telling them things you wouldn't tell your spouse. And that has been known to happen. And people think it's, well, because they pray about everything. Yeah, well... That's good, but don't have them praying about things that you're not talking to your wife or your husband about. Because as soon as you start using somebody else for an intimate sounding board, there could be a very big problem. The other thing is unwise choices. I said that before. Don't put people on your prayer shield that you're not sure about. Even if they say, oh, but I'd love to. I always pray for you. Listen to your gut. You know, if, if, you're not, if you don't feel safe, then you won't share details. So don't put unwise choices on there. Um, stacking your prayer shield. This is a great one. I just did this for a guy in down in Phoenix somewhere. And um, I told him not to stack his prayer shields with everybody from his church. He's a worship leader. Now, do you know why that would be a bad decision? Because when he needed to pray about things about his church, he couldn't send anything out to his prayer shield. So he was using mine. 
So he was saying, I really need prayer. So I was sending all this stuff out to our, my personal prayer shield. And I said to him, okay, when this is done, we need to get this fixed. So don't stack your prayer shield with everybody from your church because you need confirmational voices from outside. But also, sometimes you need your church stuff prayed about. Okay, your responsibilities as a leader, consistent contact. I covered that already. Prayer requests and answers to prayer. Brian is great, although we've really had to work on him, haven't we, Brian? His, uh, you know, a lot of times you take for granted the answers to prayer, but those feed intercessors. You know, they will pray for whatever you ask them to, but boy, is it ever awesome when, they, when you get an email that says, and this is what's happened. That feeds them. So answers to prayer and prayer requests feed them and thank them. Um, I send out cards to my intercessors all the time. Uh, Brian, you know, I organize a tea for the ones that are in Abbotsford, and Brian tells them an overview of the year. He thanks them because intercession is a really thankless job. And then pray for them. You don't have to do it the way we do it, but you can say, like, God bless my intercessors. Okay, and I just, I put on this little testimonial because I loved this. It says, uh, this is from a worship leader in um, Toronto. That I have to say having a prayer shield has brought a new level of connected with, connectedness with the larger body. We don't feel so alone in ministry. And it's a wonderful, although humbling, to know that people are committed to pray for us and our family. And that's what I meant earlier when I said, don't let the enemy say, who are you? Because we need to get you prayed for. We want to get you prayed for. So one more thing. This is from a worship leader in our city. Another side benefit of staying in touch with a prayer shield has been taking the time monthly to actually pause, reflect, and discern what's going on in our lives, personally and in ministry. It's been a huge encouragement to know and to look at previous updates and see how God's answered our prayers and protected and provided for us. So that's all the details about a prayer shield. So um, if, you, if you are a leader and you don't have one, I think that if you're here, I think God's probably telling you that you need to really consider this. If you're an intercessor and you're saying, man, I'd love to be on a prayer shield, please go to that blog address and contact me. We have a pool of intercessors that just say, I feel called to pray for leaders or worship leaders, and I slot you in on, on prayer shields all over the world. We're loving to do that. So um, please prayerfully say, Lord, is this for me? I think a prayer shield is for everybody, and we'd love to see everybody covered. And we'd love to see intercessors getting used to their potential to be able to pray for leaders. Because who knows, eh? I did a little, um, I'll just tell you real quick, I did a little experiment two years ago, and I thought, okay, I am prayed for all these pastors and leaders, and that's cool. And um, But the Lord started talking to me about people that were taking um, ground in the business world. And so I contacted all these Christian business leaders. You know, some of them were down in the States. Some of them were for Australia, you name it. Uh, some of them were big businesses. Some of them were just mom and pop businesses. And I said, would you like to try an experiment with me? I would like to see how your business does if we line you up and set you up with intercessors to pray for your business for the next six months. So they all said yes. So I had all these intercessors that feel called to pray for the financial world and finances. And so what we did was I didn't tell them who they were praying for. They got the first name and they got the type of business it was and the vision somebody had for their business. And we assigned all these intercessors. Well, it was amazing. People had, business leaders were having movement in bank things and getting businesses and buildings and it was phenomenal. And the intercessors were loving it because finally somebody was calling on them to pray. Like Brian talked about us being this hidden bunch. We are this hidden bunch. People think we're weird because most people don't like to pray. No, really. I mean, when I first started praying, uh, I started praying with his mom and I didn't like prayer meetings. I thought prayer meetings were really boring. And only little old ladies went to prayer meetings. And then God told me, you're going to have a prayer meeting, and if you don't open the door and call people in, I'm going to send them anyways. And I kind of went, yeah, right. I thought, that mail got to the wrong person because I don't pray. And then his mom, I met her in a class she was teaching on prayer, and she says to me out of the blue, I hear you're having a prayer meeting at your house. 
And I went, maybe. And she said, I'd like to come. And I thought, no. You teach on prayer. That's way too intimidating. I don't even pray yet. But you know what? Out of that, I was obedient, and she came, and she mentored me. And I'll tell you something, older intercessors, I'm going to give you a little clue right now. Agnes, who is one of my dearest friends now and an amazing prayer woman, when she came into that meeting, I kept trying to hand leadership to her because she's a teacher on prayer. She's been doing it for, oh, well, how old is Brian? And probably before Brian was born. And you know what she kept saying to me? No, you're the leader. And I'd say, yeah, but I don't know how to do this. And she said, no, but God called, God called you to do this. I'll stand with you, I'll support you, but you're the leader. Now that was, we've been praying together for pastors and leaders in our city for 15 years now. That was pretty scary as a young woman to have an older mentor, older intercessor say to me, I'm not going to take over your job, but I will sit here and help you. So if you're any older intercessors in this place, look for someone to mentor in prayer. It is probably the greatest treasure you can give some young intercessor. Amen. And I really believe as we walk this out that we're going to be able to walk in faithfulness and, and, and walk in a way that's going to please God and save so many leaders from being shipwrecked. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Break Forth Fully Alive podcast. We pray you were richly blessed. But before we leave you, we want to remind you again to head over to our website at BreakForthMinistries.com where you'll learn more about our tours to the lands of the Bible, our resources, inspiring videos, workshops, our online and in-person events, and more. Until next time, may you become fully alive in the love of God.